how the the, um, the solid waste department is working yes. and yes. being paid. Yes. Okay. So, Brian, I'm going to take you through this really quickly since you didn't get a chance to see this. All right? Okay. And what I do want to tell you at this stage is this is not a disciplinary meeting. Okay? Um, the reason that I ask that you be present is so that we could get information about how the department is, you know, you could flush out things about why the department's running the way it is. And the goal is to get to a place where everybody understands how the department is currently working and what may or may not be needed and some decisions related to that in the future. Okay? Okay. All right, so so I was given the memorandum of understanding, or the memo, right, which is, is Brian, you wrote that, and it was adopted on October 28, 2011. And it's about the um, kind of the time and how the time is currently working. So what I did is I put it all together and I, I gave it to the commissioners and what I said, and to Corey, and what I said was that based on what you guys did back in 2011 and how time is actually, how that memorandum thing was actually implemented now, okay, that there's a, a potential issue on how time is being kept. So what it looks like is is the premise is, is that your the solid waste department, the canisters, have to be there has to be somebody there um, every day at some point. So the basic thing that we have to start with is how the work week is defined in raw water. And how the work week is defined is it starts Monday at twelve oh one AM or Sunday at 12.01 a.m., and it ends at midnight on Saturday. So when you're working at accounting for hours, right, any hours that are worked on Sunday go into a 40-hour regular work week. And the way the Fair Labor Standards Act works is the first 40 hours of a work week get counted as straight time. Any time over 40 hours in a work week is overtime. And a county can choose to pay overtime at one and a half times, or they can choose to pay or account for overtime, any overtime hours, as comp time. So when we say comp time, all comp time is, is instead of having to pay somebody money, you're just giving them time but you must do it at 1.5 times their regular rate under the Fair Labor Standards Act. So that's the premise that we're working with. So um, what we've got is we've got you guys typically working a, an eight-hour day on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You indicated to me that there's a number of times that you leave early on Fridays. Depending on workload, yeah. Depending on workload, and that is, um, and that you have somebody come in on that's assigned, but they do it, you know, they, they basically check the facility out, and I'm going to divide it, divide it into canisters and, um, oh, what's that area called? The transfer station, okay, which is out of town. Right. That they're not assigned to go to the transfer station every weekend, but sometimes they potentially do go to the transfer station depending on what the need is. If somebody calls in and says, we need this. Correct. Okay. So, and what you do is they basically do a, a drive-by or a check-in. Um, and your assumption or what you like to have happen is that if they are assigned to work on the weekend, that they'll do kind of a check-in on in the morning on Saturday and Sunday and then in the afternoon on Saturday and Sunday. And then depending on how full the canisters are, they're either, dump, you know, unloading canisters or if, some, if they overflow and somebody dumps stuff around the canisters, they're picking that up. But it's generally based on a workload. They drive by, they see, and they do what work is required. It's typically.
typically three times on a Saturday, um, and it, it could be up to three times on a Sunday that we need to check them. Sunday evening isn't that important because we're going to be there first thing Monday morning to take care of anything that might be there. So. Okay. And <laughs> when I talked to you, it was unclear how much time this actually took. Like, depending on what's going on, it could take, you know, you, I, I mean, I think you were hard pressed to tell me that they, somebody actually worked a full four hours typically. But again, it was based on workload, right? Right. right. So, so under the memorandum of understanding, and and it's my my based on what you told me, Brian, is when you came on board, that basically Steve told you that this is how it had always been done. Correct. Okay. And so when you came on board, and that was in 2011. Yeah. Okay. Steve told you that that when somebody was assigned to work on Saturday or Sunday, that they were provided or automatically credited, no matter how how many hours they worked, that they got four hours of comp time on Saturday and they got four hours of comp time on Sunday. And if they ended up having to go to the transfer station, they got an extra hour of comp time. Correct. Okay, now, when you put together your memorandum of understanding, that's what you said, is, and, and Laura, correct me if I'm wrong, but at that time in 2011, there were two other commissioners in you. So you're the only link at, from the commissioner standpoint in 2011, correct? Yes. Okay, so, so the goal of this memorandum was to actually put in place this is what we've done in the past, all right, and you put in there that what the work week was, you said we're going to start hours at 7 a.m., and we're going to go to 3 p.m., people are going to have one hour for lunch, and, we and don't then take in an hour time, you put that it's earned at a rate of 1.5 hours after 40 hours of work. Right. Okay. So, Other than the, the hour way, for lunch, we don't do an hour for lunch. Way, huh? We don't do an hour for lunch. We just work straight through. Okay, you do straight through now. Well, that's why we're here. We're here to figure out potentially, guys, potentially, um, there is an issue with how people have may, maybe have been paid, all right? But it's very hard out what that looks like unless we understand what the real hours are if somebody works on Saturday and Sunday. Okay? And so, Brian, what I would like to know from you is, first of all, you know, how does it really work Monday through Friday? You know, what does it really look like on Saturday and Sunday? And then I'd like you guys all to discuss what you think needs to be done on Saturdays and Sundays and timing of this. Okay, because what I'd like to come to at the end of this is, you know, do we really need to have somebody working Saturday or Sunday? The answer may be yes. Do, if, if it's Saturday and, is it Saturday and Sunday? Is it just Saturday? Um, and then how do we get a grip on what hours are so that we can make sure that we're doing this correctly? And... Is this something that's kind of seasonal? Do we need to have it go all year, or can we start it up in certain months or not? And I think, you know, you guys just need to discuss that. And then from there, we can decide what needs to be done after that. I can't tell you guys. I don't know anything about solid waste. <laughs> I don't know what your garbage cans look like. I know I have a service. They don't care if my garbage can is filled or not. Right? If I call them, they charge me extra. So I'm going to leave all this up to you guys to discuss what this looks like. Okay. I, I would suggest that um, we defer to Brian as the expert and the department head. What do you think? Well, our typical day runs from 7 in the morning till 3 in the afternoon. <laughs> We don't take a lunch break. The reason we don't take a lunch break is the landfill hours that we go to 
they shut down at four o'clock. If we take a lunch break, and it's a, a two hour round trip to the landfill, roughly. If we take a lunch break, that puts us heading to the landfill at one o'clock. We get in there, they don't have enough time to, to process our trash before they leave. So we need to be on our way to the landfill by one o'clock every day. So they have enough time to process our trash at the landfill. Where's that landfill at? Currently we're using Tri-County Landfill outside of East Town. Okay. Um, <clears throat> that's the closest landfill to us. If we go anywhere else, it's, it's going to be different. Um, so we need to get there in time to accommodate their schedule, which if we leave our facility by 1 o'clock in the afternoon, we can get in there, get our trash offloaded, they can process it, they can put their landfill away to bed for the night the way they need to, and everybody's happy. Okay, so Brian, how many people go to the landfill? One. Okay, so out of the three of you, one of you is assigned to go to the landfill, and you leave at one, and whoever that person is leaves at one o'clock, and they're back by three. Well, they need to leave by one o'clock. You can go earlier. Um, if we have a truck ready to go, we get out of here by one o'clock. If we don't have a truck loaded, it stays full until the next day because we don't have enough time to get into the landfill. No, got it. Okay. All right. Okay, so that's a, so a typical day is you all come in at 7 o'clock, right? Yep. And one person somewhere, hopefully, at 1 o'clock is driving a, a truck up to the landfill to have the garbage processed. If, if we have a load, somebody will be on their way to the landfill, yes. And if you don't have a load, then they just go the next day when you do have a load? Yep. Okay. truck or handling cardboard or fixing canisters or whatever that is to be done for the day. So is Friday different? Okay. Fridays are typically our slower day. Okay. So we kind of run out of trash by Friday. Okay. So late, lately it hasn't been that way. Okay. So schedule wise on Friday not is it just say so yeah it's the same as Monday through Thursday or do you want to say different? I'd say on Fridays, we still are open 7 to 3, but we may not be handling trash as much. But there's always something for somebody to be doing if you're of that mindset. Or if there's nothing so to do. So it's a slower day for trash? It's a slower day for trash. Okay. So when, when somebody leaves early, or when you guys leave early on Friday, why is that? Because What's the thought process there? The trash is hauled, and you got to use up your comp time somewhere. So if if there's not anything pressing that needs to be done, um, people can go home. Okay, the but, they take, they but they schedule, they use comp time to make up the eight hours. Yes. Okay, so then you guys go to the landfill. Okay, and then on the weekends, how does the how does it how do you make the schedule? Who typically works it, and what do they do? We all take a turn. We just rotate weekends. Um, if somebody has something they want to do, they'll trade a weekend with somebody. You know, it's not real formal, um, but we do have a rotation, and it is seasonal. You know, we don't work weekends in the winter time um, because it's slower. Uh, springtime, we have to work weekends or we would have a huge mess to deal with. Okay, so when does it start getting, if you were going to, if you actually had to say when we, when do you start typically working weekends in the spring? I'd say March, when people start cleaning up their lawns, depends on how the, the weather goes. Okay. If it's a mild winter, there's a chance we could have to work every weekend all winter long. Just depends. Okay. And the and when the 
when does it kind of, you know, slow down for the winter? Um, usually November it'll slow down. Okay. And what's a typical Saturday look like, and then let's look at a typical Sunday? There's nothing typical in the solid waste world. Um, but a Saturday, we, we make sure all the cans are, are empty on Friday. Uh, we have them open for the weekend, or we, you can stagger them however you think is going to manage. You know, have two open, two closed. Um, so people are funneled to those open canisters on a Friday afternoon to make sure they're as full as they can be. Um, we have ones that are, the way they're positioned, we know which ones are uh, get full faster because people will pull in and they tend to stop the same ones. Um, so we kind of try to keep the ones that don't fill up as fast open on Friday, so it forces people to use them. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so then either Friday night you can go down and open all the canisters up, or you can wait till Saturday morning to open up the other two. Uh, if the cans that are open need packed on Saturday morning, you pack them. Typically, the, the tree can is, is our busiest one in the spring. Uh, that one needs to be packed periodically throughout the weekend. Um, and when you come in, if you see something needs packed, you get the back door and you pack it. it that's your morning check. Uh, we like to check them in, in midday just to see how things are looking. If they're full, we pack them. If they're not, you can wait till later in the day. And then do an evening pack. Um, usually, I like to do mine around 7 o'clock or so when it's, you know, as, it, as it's lighter, uh, just to make sure you catch the end of the day and it's ready to go for Sunday morning. Um, Sunday mornings, you know, we don't like to get down there right bright and early because we go to church, that kind of thing. So if you pack later on Saturday night, you can go to church and enjoy your family and then go pack after that. Um, so it, it's probably about noon before you're there on a Sunday. Um, and that might be the only time you need to pack on Sunday. It depends. If, if it's slow, uh, like this weekend, Saturday was busy because it was nice. Sunday the clouds moved in and it was rainy and it slowed down. Uh, so you have to not just pack, do you ever have to move an empty canister and put it in clean? It's possible. You know, the tree canister is probably our worst enemy there. If, if it gets too full, we'll have to go up and get the truck and, and empty it and bring it back. Um, and if somebody's doing a huge cleanup of some type and they fill up a canister, there's a chance we may have to empty a can. Or if there's a customer comes in with a large load of shingles or something that we don't want in our canister, we can... Um, accompany them up to the transfer station and take care of their needs there. That's where that extra hour comes in if you have to do that. Okay. And uh, if, if, like for instance, Corey drove in there and all the canisters were full, right? What, does, do you guys get a phone call? Is there the ability to do that? We all carry um, a phone. Um, Sometimes, you know, people don't know everybody's number, so they call the number that they do know. Um, they'll tell that person the canisters are full. Whoever gets that call will typically call the, uh, the person that's on duty that weekend and let them know that the cans are full. Uh, I'll just dump it on the ground. <laughs> you know, that um, happens. Yeah. <laughs> and that requires more time to clean up. What about up? the person who's got the, you know, the... the the truck full of shingles, right? How do they, if they show up and nobody's there, how do they, do they know to call you to, to, to take you to the transfer station? Are their numbers posted someplace? How does that work? The numbers are posted. They don't typically see them. Uh, there are signs down there that say large loads should go to the canister safe, uh, to the transfer station. Um, but people don't read. So they probably will throw them in a canister or close to a canister and we'll have to clean it up later. Uh, this time of year okay. you get every leftover thing from every yard sale that's done. Um, so you got to spend a little extra time putting that in the cans and clean it up on the weekend. Okay. Everybody thinks the stuff they're throwing away is not quite 
junk yet. It's still right. good. Okay. All right. So, um, I think the decision for you guys is, is knowing. So, but Brian, there's, I, I will say did this. Did you work on a weekend? Did you work last weekend or who worked? I worked the uh, weekend before last. Okay, no. so the weekend before last, Two tell, weeks. Us, tell us what it looked like and how much time it took you. Um, so on Saturday, it right? wasn't it wasn't real busy. Um, I opened cans up on. I had two open Friday night. I opened two up early Saturday morning. Um, I probably didn't have to pack until Saturday evening because it was just kind of slow. It wasn't real busy yet. Um, okay. This weekend, I wasn't on, but I drove down there a couple times just to take a look, and, and they were pretty busy. The cans were full. Um, they needed to be packed probably three times on Saturday. Okay, and when you pack them, how long does it take? Again, it depends. <laughs> um, if, if everything goes well, you're probably looking at an hour to pack and get cleaned up. Uh, if it's a mess, it could take longer. I would say over, the reason I came up with that, that four hour chunk is on a, a Saturday, you probably spend two hours and 20 minutes, which is, you take two hours and 20 minutes times 1.5, you get four. Uh, you probably spend that amount of time by the time, because you're using your personal vehicle, by the time you leave your house, you drive to the canister site, you have to get the backhoe out, take care of the site, it's probably two hours and 20 minutes worth of work on a Saturday. I will say too, at the time of this memo, there were only two people in that department, and other than the, the canister watchers, which was before your time, so yeah. it was just the two of you. And they were compiling uh, comp time and vacation at an alarming rate because they were doing the full 40 by Friday and then we still needed to work on win weekend. So it made sense at the time um, because they were required to work over 40 hours a week. Now that's changed and um, what I'd like to, to discuss is, so what's a better policy now moving forward since you have three full-timers? Well, we, we typically still follow this. There was a period of time where we didn't do this. We went with, you know, you counted your regular time on, on Saturday or Sunday and figured your comp time out at the end of the week because what it really gets goofy when there's a week with a holiday in it because basically you're, you're, you're writing down on your timesheet that you worked 12 hours on that holiday. Um, and it, it's difficult. So we said it's four hours, Saturday, Sunday, and a holiday. And I said, I, I don't really have a dog in a fight. I'll do whatever's legal. Could you schedule uh, roving weekends where one person would work shorter hours on Friday, schedule shorter hours on Friday, and then pick but up then the Saturday? But then that same person would have to leave early the next Friday, too, because they'd have their hours on Sunday and Monday if it's a holiday. So on Friday, you'd end up with one person working. Could you actually switch off your your Sundays? So the, week the person on Sunday. exactly. So, so you split weekends. Yeah. I I don't know. Or I what to, is your proposal? I like it the way it is. It, it's simpler this way, but we um, have to change it to fit. But okay, so we keep it the way it is. How do we change it to fit with three employees versus two? It's just you. You have a third, you earn a third of the amount of comp time that you were earning before, is what a third person does. It spreads it out more. Um, but I don't know, I don't know what the, the answer is. Michelle, can we have an exception to the work week for one department? Say for solid waste, we would change the personnel policies to reflect a work week of Monday morning through Sunday night, and then that way an employee could work say half a day on Friday, three hours on Saturday, one on Sunday, to go ahead and cover the weekend work. Is that something that would work? 
Oh, guess who we lost? <laughs> the other option is, and it's not a good option. Well, I may, maybe I don't know if it is or not. Is that uh, you do the packing and the moving and stuff on Saturday, and then you don't do any on Sunday. The problem is, as a customer, there's a lot yeah. of times I'm doing stuff on Sunday, and I, I one time Sundays I went can there. Sundays get pretty busy. Yeah, and I was loading, and I did a load, and I was the probably the last load in the tree thing. I came back two hours later, and it was a brand new canister there. It was empty. I was like, wow, this is impressive. Uh, and it was busy. And of course, you also have about five or six people that are crawling down into the canisters trying to salvage whatever treasure someone else left. But um, I don't know. I mean, it is a busy, it is, busy, it is generally busy on weekends. Yeah. So. What, uh, what, what day is is like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Is one of those days a slower day? Um, Monday mornings are busy. Uh, Tuesdays are probably the out of the Monday through Thursday issue. Tuesday or Thursday are probably the slower. Hi. Day. So could we take that? Hang on, I'm going to put you back on speaker. And have, have them take Friday afternoon off or Saturday. No, my cell phone was charging. Tuesday or Wednesday afternoon <laughs> so off. So it was turned off. The problem with that is, you know, it's not. Okay, now you're on. Sorry. I don't know why. You know what happens is I'm talking and all of a sudden the phone starts ringing. There's not a, a full. <laughs> I don't say, know why. Four hours of work on a Saturday. You know, you're. Okay, so you're where are we at? Blocks of time. Well, a question I had, Michelle, is. Um, there's sometimes a need for work on Sunday, which Brian was just establishing. So is there a reason why we couldn't change our personnel policies for this one department only to state that a work week starts on Monday through Sunday night? That way an employee could work half day on Friday, say three hours on Saturday and an hour on Sunday for their 40 hour work week. And then one person would be responsible for the weekend rather than splitting that up and taking away a weekend from two employees? Um, there, there's no reason from, a, from an HR perspective, a personnel policy perspective, that we couldn't do that. The question becomes how hard is it in your system to do that, your payroll system? Because the payroll system is going to automatically have your work week in there. We might be going to automated through Black Mountain. I would think that would be a program they could write for us. I. I have no clue. I can't answer that question for you. Okay? You All would right. think. However, when you make assumptions, you know what assumptions start with, right? Uh, absolutely. Yes. And then yes. the other Thank problem we had with with trying to um, wait till the end of the week to figure out what comp time you earned was on a split week. You know, when the, the pay period ended on the Wednesday and your new time card came. You had to make sure you knew how many hours you had in that time period before. Okay. So Sorry, who was talking? That's Brian. And that's Brian. Okay. Sorry, you guys are going to have to talk louder. Is there a uh, I'm sorry, guys. This is a pain in the butt. There, if you guys decide that how do you want to do this, is you want to keep everybody to a 40 hour week, even if we can't modify the, the work schedule in the in the computer system, we can make that happen. We can just say, you know, there's ways to, to manipulate, you know, like let somebody go home early, let somebody take off. The problem is, is that they have so much comp time turned up now, right? They've been taking their comp time during a week. Okay, we're gonna have to discuss all of this and figure out how to, how to do it, but, um, so at this stage, I wouldn't worry about when the work week starts or ends. I think the, the next question becomes, do you have to have somebody working, quote, unquote, overtime? Well, the answer is that if you do have someone over 40 hours as a result of their Saturday work, they just need to be compensated at the overtime rate, whether that's they want to accept comp time at one and a half or they get paid at one and a half. Is that right? Sorry, I'm missing all of this. I just said that, but the reality is that uh, if someone works on Saturday and that puts them over 40 hours, whatever they're over, they need to be compensated at the overtime rate, whether they accept comp time at one and a half or whether it's pay at one and a half. Okay, so 
right? Right. I think what you just said is, it, look, the bottom line on the Fair Labor Standards Act is that if somebody works over 40 hours, they're supposed to get time and a half. Right. Or it's half, half or it's comp time, time and a half. Okay. And so the Sunday, if we keep the work week as is, whoever works on Sunday... They just need to, that's the front, those are the first hours they've worked of the week, and that's put on the front end. And so if, if there is an early release on Friday, and it sounds like what they rotate, it would be a different person working on Saturday. They just have to ensure those Sunday hours are counted toward their week's total. And it would be actual time. Or, or what you could do is, you basically... Brian, for example, Brian, do you get paid hourly or do you get a wage? <laughs> I get paid hourly. You get paid hourly. Okay, so this works. So this is Brian's schedule to work, you know, um, last week, weekend. Okay. So let's say that his Sunday hours or his work week hours for this week, right, started started yesterday. So let's assume on Sunday he actually worked two hours, right? Yep. Then, and then his work week wouldn't end until Saturday, but if they rotate weekends, he wouldn't be working this Saturday anyway, unless for some reason they switch. But let's assume he's not working this coming weekend. So right. if he worked two hours on Sunday, and we actually know the hours he worked, then he could leave early on Friday by two hours, and then he worked just 40 hours. Right. But then you've also got the person that's working the weekend before, or the next weekend, who, to cover for Saturday's time, would leave early on Friday, which leaves right. one person handling the rest of Friday. On, if we knew who was working the next, next weekend, right? So, so we know that Brian's going to work the next weekend, but we don't know who's working the weekend comp time and still get their 40 hours of pay. They can get 40 now what, pay for okay. their comp time, but you're not paying any overtime. In the, the scenario we're talking about here where you, you give the person who's working the next weekend time off during the week somewhere. Now what happens if, um, say Saturday we get a, a huge thunderstorm and it, it rains all day and nobody throws any trash away and they don't have to pack all weekend? So well, that's, then that's they the key here, is then for they're scheduled to work, then they're scheduled to work. But if there's no work, why are they, they there? You know what? Is this Brian? Yeah. Okay, so Brian, it's a it's a it's a Saturday. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if Brian is Not typically on a Saturday. Could be in their cleaning of facilities, that they could be mixing cans. I don't know. Is there no work that could be done if they're scheduled to work? Well, if, if we're calling it scheduled to work on Saturday, yeah, they'd have to find work to do. But weekend coverage is just managing the canisters. And if but it's. See, that's what, but that's what we're discussing right now. And if it's raining. And nobody's throwing anything away. 
the canisters are and managing they only, themselves. They only get 36 hours of work, and they can fill in comp time for the rest of their hour to get their regular pay. Here's the deal. My, I am going to tell you that I do not believe that from an HR perspective that you should be weekend work. If you were a person out in the regular, in, in regular work land, right, not in government work land, mm-hmm. you get your 40 hours, and if your 40 hours, if four of those were scheduled for Saturday, that's what you worked. Or you um, use comp time to make up for it. Because you came on is that weekend work is only managing the canisters. That's the decision that has to be made here, is whether that's what Broadwater County wants to do, and if that's what you guys want to do, do you do you give somebody time to do that? And then you've got the problem with all everybody else in departments having like, well, somebody got there four hours of work and they didn't even have to work four hours on a Saturday when you're dealing with union negotiations, or do you just want to make give people a schedule? Make the schedule? You know, I would say we don't make it a scheduled time on Saturday. You know, these guys are working five days a week anyway. Um, the weekend coverage is, is more of a convenience to our customers than anything. You know, it, it has to be done in order for our customers to be able to dispose of their trash safely. You know, or, I don't know, we could change our whole way of doing things and we close down our canister sites on Wednesday. And we open it up on Saturday. Oh, okay. I'm wondering, that, Michelle. That's a whole different ballgame. I, th- I think this is simple, personally. Um, I would like to suggest, I mean, we can, we can bat around the reasons this won't work and come up with all kinds of different ideas. But what I would like to do is maybe propose that we focus on how to make it work, to get the job done for the benefit of the customer, for the public safety. So, can I request that we have a proposal and put this on the agenda for a week from today and have a proposal by Friday so we can all see it, mull it over, and then discuss it on Friday and hopefully adopt it on Monday? Or discuss yeah, it on Monday. I don't think a decision has to be made today, but I think you guys as commissioners have to make a decision about whether or not you're open on the weekend or not. And if you are going to be open on the weekends, are you open both days on the weekends? And how do you want to account for somebody's time? I mean, whoever, Brian just had a good idea. I mean, you may have a day that's slower, like Friday. Maybe you decide that you're going to close on Friday at noon, and and you're open for four hours on Saturday. Yeah. I don't know what the answer is. And, and who who is it that you, you want to put the proposal together for us? I would suggest Brian, again, because he's the expert. Um, this is his department. And then I would think if he just emailed it to us, we could go ahead and, and read that on Friday so that we're prepared for a discussion on Monday. Uh, okay. Well, I'm, I'm okay with, with having some ideas put around. What about, but I'd like to hear from Franklin and Mike about what their thoughts related to what's in, you know, so that Brian has a direction to go on whether or not this needs to be, you know, your thought process of work on the weekend or being open on the weekends or the need to be open on the weekend. Well, this is Mike. If, if you're not open on the weekend, Brian's going to go to the transfer station <laughs> or the canister site on Cedar Street, and he's not going to be able to get in the gate because there's going to be like 45 loads of garbage sitting in front of the gate because people aren't going to put up with it. Uh, okay, so Mike, you believe that there's a lot of work, there's a lot of, there's a need to be open on the weekend? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. Based on what you've seen going on personally, right? Yes. I lived on the okay. street a block away from the road that goes to the transfer station, and on Saturday and mid-afternoon Sunday, it's it's going all the time. Okay, Franklin, what's your thought on it? Well, I think uh, Brian was talking there earlier. Uh, 
your little shifts. You know, if it, it, it ends up a Saturday, it's raining all day or something like that. There's still some things a guy can do around the cleaning property. If there isn't, I mean, so what? I mean, uh, he has a good, easy day, but he, through the stretch of the year, he's going to have some days that are going to really be tough. And so I'm not against somebody having an easy day. As long as you keep the schedule in the rotation is what I would say. Well, what, what I'm hearing is I'm going to have to tell my guys they're now scheduled to work six-day weeks. No, I'm sorry. You're going to tell your guys they're scheduled to work a lot? They're going to have to work six days weeks or seven no, days not weeks if they're covering a week. You're going to have to, I mean, you have to look at it. If you've got, if you've got people that can leave early on Fridays, then it sounds to me like you could probably have somebody not work on Friday afternoon. Well, I, I think that's what we need to come up with. I need to talk to my guys and, and find out exactly how much time we're putting in on a Saturday and a Sunday, and then we shift our schedules. You know, if you're working the weekend, you, you leave early on Friday. Um, right. Now, and if you work the next weekend, Friday, you might leave early on Thursday. You really need to know about this. Okay, and I'm just going to give you an example. So say you have somebody who, like, you worked the prior weekend, and on Sunday it actually was a beautiful day, it got busy, and you work four hours on Sunday. Uh-huh. Okay? And then you work eight hours on Monday. And you work eight hours on Tuesday. And you work eight hours on Wednesday. And you work eight hours on Thursday. Right? Yep. So you now have 36 hours. So they're out of here at 11 on, on Friday. And on Friday, you take eight hours, and you work eight hours on Friday, okay? Yep. All right, so four hours on Friday is overtime. Correct. All right. Say you changed, now, the way it's currently being done is that four hours of overtime on Friday, now, so for the for your work week, so you don't work on Saturday. For your work week, you're supposed to be paying you're supposed to be getting paid four hours of overtime, all right? Which means that it's literally the equivalent of six hours of time because it's supposed to be a time and a half. Okay. But the way they're interpreting and they put it into the system for the MOU. Is it just a straight four hours? That's four hours of time on the prior Sunday. You're only getting four hours of credit for. Because it's really two hours and twenty minutes worth of work. Is how it was but, set up. But it's, it's but it doesn't matter. It's being put into the system as four hours of work time, which should be being paid at at, at overtime rates. Okay. You cannot create a system where you're artificially putting in time. Regardless of what is going on, whether you guys decide to be open or not open, the only way to do this correctly is that people have to track their time. If they work an hour on a Saturday because it rained, it doesn't matter if they were called out on a Saturday. They work one hour they account for one hour of time. Okay. It doesn't matter if they go to the transfer station. If they got there and they went three times on a Saturday to do drive-bys and check, it's the time that they're there. And it's not their drive time. Drive time doesn't count in this. It's when it's, it's, I got to my facility at X time. I got there at 12 o'clock. It doesn't matter if I left my house at quarter of. I got there at 12 o'clock, and I worked from 12 to 1, and then I had to go to the transfer station, and that took me an hour and a half. They were counting for two and a half hours there. 
Okay. So any proposal that's put together, I mean, you're going to ask people, just like I asked you, what's the real time you're working? And they're going to be like, well, it kind of depends on the day. I don't know, right? Exactly. And you guys don't have a history to track back and say what an average is. But in order to comply with the Fair Labor Standards Act, it doesn't work unless you actually account for time. Okay? <clears throat> okay. So I know that in, from how you guys have been doing this, this seems unfair. It seems like, well, if somebody has to work on a weekend, they should be compensated for that. But you're artificially, you're artificially creating hours for people that we don't know if they're accurate or not. Okay? So the kind of arrangement you guys have come up with is the kind of arrangement that unions negotiate for their bargaining unit, unit members, but you guys are not collective bargaining unit. I mean, they're not unions. They're not part of the union. Okay? We're the solid waste union. <laughs> yeah. So, so whatever proposal you come up with, what I'd like you to do is keep in mind what I just talked to you about, about having to comply with federal law. Okay? Right. And I can dare to help you. If you have issues, you want to know how this works, like what happens if we do X or Y, Michelle, call me during the week and I will help you work through this. And, and think about this. This is this is a process that we're starting. So you don't have to, I mean, you may come up with three different ideas that might potentially work. So a proposal could have three different thought processes that you present to the commissioners, and then the commissioners decide how they want it to work and what they want it to look like. Okay? Okay. All right. So... Do you have any other questions? Because after you're done, I want you to leave and I want to close this. Okay? Okay. No, I think, I think I've got enough idea of something. Try to come up with something that'll work. I think I need to have a, a little session with my crew and find out what they were thinking is going to happen. But yeah. they're not going to be happy on any occasion, so... Yeah, no, I get that they're not going to be happy, okay? <laughs> but, but, I mean, part of this is, is I want, it's not what's best for them, it's what they, what does the county have, need, right? Yeah. And I think you have a good idea of how each commissioner is thinking this, you know, what their thought process is behind what needs to happen, okay? So do you guys see anything I missed before we let, we cut Brian loose? Well, I just, I don't know that in terms of their time, I don't know that this is going to be more of a burden. It may be less of a burden if they get time off okay, in the week. Okay, speak louder and into the <laughs> I'm just saying, the reality is I don't know that their time is going to be uh, either significantly different. It may give them some time off in the week in order to account for the weekend. Really what it comes down to is we just have to ensure that the weekends are accounted for properly. And that's... The, if if the if the workload shifts on the weekend, or if you know the same customer service is provided on the weekend, and therefore the, maybe there there's times in the week when they are off early, but really what it comes down to is we just have to account for those weekend hours correctly. That's probably the biggest exactly. biggest and issue. I, and I don't know if their weekend if their time is going to shift significantly either. And to be honest with you, Brian, if they're actually working. The way this works is if they work for three hours on a weekend, if they really are working three hours and they count for three hours, right, then that's the equivalent of 4.5 hours. Right. But they've agreed to four. So <laughs> it, okay, it really so, is a collective so, bargaining agreement that's not an official collective bargaining agreement. And we revisit those every three years. You know, it's a it's a solid waste employee association. You know that just it's another unit among the county that we deal with. You know, we're I keep telling people we're unique. That you are. 
I tell them they're they're not going to get their four hours of comp time on a weekend, and they're only going to get paid for the hours that they actually spend at the canister canister site on a weekend, and they get to take time off during the week to accommodate for that. They might join the union. They might just jump on board with the well, road crew. They join the union. They join the union. And be they part have of the every right to do that, and they have every right to have a bargain unit representative if they choose to do that. And then we negotiate it, and then they're going to have their hours accounted for. Okay, right. um, but but this is not, we are not here to cater to the employees. That is not our job. All right, our job is to follow the law as it stands right now. And that's, all right, and so that's what we need to do. Okay. All right, and I understand that this has been going on for a long time and that there's going to be some heartache here, but... You know, I don't know how many comp hours people have accredited. And, it, and Corey's right. I mean, it very well may be that they can, you know, that every other weekend somebody continues to incur overtime. They incur it the correct way. And, you know, the, and the commissioners are balancing out the needs of the county. And so from a public um, use standpoint, right, the public wants their canisters open on the weekend in the spring, right? The county commissioners decide that, yeah, for this five month period of time, you know, we're going to budget in this kind of, these kinds of numbers. Now, here's another suggestion, you guys, and you can think about this, is that basically Brian not say anything to his guys at all, except you need to keep you know, just for, for we're doing, we're doing um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at what the actual time that work are. I was asked to do this by the HR person. And so I need you guys to keep um, actual times right now for the next two weekends on set, you know, or three weekends that we actually tell them that they have to keep the time record. And... And after we have a better idea of what actual time they're working on the weekends, right, that then we have the proposal from Brian and we have a discussion related to it. Yeah, either way. Again, from the expert in the field, um, I, 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 you know, as far as if, if you think it's a good or bad idea to involve the staff, I, I think it's probably not a bad idea to involve them. But I think our jumping off point at this point is Saturday work is about two and a half hours. Um, Sunday work is probably closer to an hour. Or, yeah, hour and a half. Hour maybe an hour and a half. And we just start there, and, and you know, like any, anything that comes with change, you reevaluate after a period of time to see how it's working. Okay, I'm just throwing it out there. So, if you guys, so what do you guys want to do? You have, want to have Brian talk, you know, pretty much come up with a proposal, and however he decides to do that, like what involves his staff or not, is kind of up to him. I don't think it's necessarily totally up to him, um, because I think our job is management. But I do think that the um, ideas need to come from him because he is the expert. So um, 
I'd like to see a proposal or a number of proposals and then I'd like to as a group approve those really the four of us official vote of three but certainly I want the department's buy-in and support okay. that's just my thought so, Mike Franklin do you guys what do you suggest are you okay with that or do you want to put out another idea well, I, I'm I'm okay. This is Mike. I'm okay with that. I w I would think that the uh, what we should do is schedule three on Saturday and possibly two on Sunday. But the only thing that I don't really like about this is, like Brian was saying, is now you've got these guys working seven days. But the thing is, they're already doing that irregardless. They're already working seven days, two weeks in, for a couple weeks in a row because they have to work. They have to work. They have to work a Monday through a Saturday, and they have to work a Sunday through a Friday. So you're already basically doing that. So I, it's not really changing the system that much. It's just, it's more regulating and documenting the hours, and instead of giving them comp time, we're giving them time off during the week. But I'm right, open to any other. There's three of them, and they're rotating weekly. So all this means is that there's one person one week that's working. You know, and we could give them a half day off, but there's one person one week that's working seven days in a row. No, there's there's two people because you you work you work Saturday you work you work Monday through Saturday one week Monday through Sunday yeah okay you're right yeah there's only one. No, it's one person because yep. what they're doing is they're actually working a weekend and then the next Monday through Friday and then you know so yeah so even though our pay week is divided on, on, starts on Sunday at 12.01 a.m. The work week is not, that's not, I mean. The work week isn't. We're not splitting them on weekends. It's not like we're saying Brian's working on Saturday and then Steve works on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. That's, you know, they're just, they're taking up a weekend, which is, which is an, another, the hassles for, for the time, to, you know, for, for finance. Yeah. When they do payroll, but. Um, okay, so Franklin, what do you think? Well, that's fine. I get the different proposals out there. We'll make one okay, of them work. So, I mean, that's all there is to it. So when do we want to see a proposal from Brian? You guys want to see a proposal from Brian by Friday, and then you can just next Monday, <coughs> is that it? It works for me. Hey, yeah, that's probably as good as any. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, great. So, You're probably going to see it earlier because I'm going to be out of here. I'm going to keep you loose okay. now if, you, if the commissioners are okay with that, and then we need to close this meeting, okay? Okay. Okay. Thanks, Thanks Brian. I'm out of here. Yeah, All right. Close the door behind you, too. Oh, <laughs> slam the door. It's the long, there you go. <laughs>